In this problem, we're going to look at a box that's being held at rest on a frictionless incline. There's a rope that's pulling parallel to the ramp that's keeping the box from sliding down. And we're going to calculate the tension in the rope needed to keep the box from sliding down, as well as the normal force of the ramp pushing on the box. Again, the normal force acts perpendicular to the ramp. That's what the word normal means. Normal means perpendicular in mathematics. So with these problems of an object on a ramp, or an object on an inclined plane, there are a few things that we can do to make the problem a little bit easier to understand. One of the things to do is to choose our x and y axis very carefully. Normally we make the x-axis in the horizontal direction, we make the y-axis in the vertical direction. But in a problem like this, especially if this rope wasn't attached to the box and this box was sliding along the ramp, we can see that it would be much easier if we had along the ramp as one axis. Again, if the box is sliding up or down the ramp, it would be much easier to be able to consider it as one-dimensional motion as opposed to motion in the x and y direction. And so for these problems of an object that's at rest on a ramp or an object that's sliding along a ramp, we're going to do a change of coordinate system. We're going to rotate our x and y axis. In fact, instead of using the terms x and y axis, I'm going to use a different name for them. So all we need for our axes, they must be perpendicular to each other. And so if this box was sliding along the ramp, we would want along the ramp or parallel to the ramp to be our axis. That way it's moving along that axis. It's one dimensional motion. So I'm going to set this up and parallel to the ramp is one axis. And the other axis has to be perpendicular to that one. And so I'm going to have an axis that's perpendicular to the ramp. And so these are going to be my new x and y axis. And again, rather than worry about which one is x and which one is y, I'm going to refer to these as the parallel axis and the perpendicular axis. Again, the axis that's parallel to the ramp and the axis that's perpendicular to the ramp. And so if this box is being held at rest, that means that the net force on that box is zero. So we need to look at the forces that are acting on this box. One force that's acting is the force of gravity. The force of gravity pulls straight down on the box. The force of gravity would be 5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, which is 49 newtons. And we also have the tension in the rope pulling up the ramp. And we have the ramp pushing perpendicular to itself. Again, the normal force is perpendicular to the ramp. So again, looking at that force diagram, we can also see why parallel to the ramp and perpendicular to the ramp was a good choice of our axes. That's because our two unknown forces, the tension and the normal force, rather than needing to break those unknown forces into components, which can be done, and it, but it makes things a little bit difficult, one of those is only acting parallel to the ramp, and one of those is only acting perpendicular to the ramp. And so it's going to make it much easier to look at. But what this does mean, normally we're used to the force of gravity because it's straight down, we don't need to worry about components. But now with this change in our coordinate axes, we can see that that force of gravity is not acting along our parallel axis, it's not acting just along the perpendicular axis, it has a component acting along each axis. And so the force of gravity is going to be the force that I need to break into components. And so as you do this, you need to draw in your components. And so the perpendicular component, I need to draw the component of the force of gravity that's perpendicular to the ramp. And then for the component of the force of gravity, the component of the weight that's parallel to the ramp, I need to make sure that I do draw that parallel to the ramp. Again, a common mistake is for people to have the parallel component of the weight going horizontally. I need to make sure that this parallel component of the weight is parallel with the ramp. So I'm going to name these two components W parallel. 
That stands for the parallel component of the weight. And W perpendicular. This stands for the perpendicular component of the weight. So I'm using the symbols that you would see in a geometry class for parallel lines and perpendicular lines. And so this is just a way that I can tell the difference between my two components. Again, rather than x and y, it makes sense to talk about the parallel component, the component that's parallel to the ramp, and the perpendicular component, the component that's perpendicular to the ramp. But to be able to break our force of gravity, the force of 49 newtons, into components, we need to know the angle inside that right triangle. We need to figure out you know, what angle is 20 degrees, is the parallel component opposite or adjacent to that 20 degree angle. And so to do that, I want to look at a little bit of geometry. If I look at this right triangle right here, this angle right here is a right angle. And so I know that this angle right here is going to be 70 degrees. Again, the angles inside a triangle have to add up to equal 180. And so I have 20 degrees, and I have 90 minus 20 degrees. So it gives that angle that I marked as 70 degrees. Then if I have something that's parallel to the ramp, and I have this axis that's perpendicular to the ramp, I know that that is a 90 degree angle. So if this angle right here was 70 degrees, I know that this angle right here has to be 90 minus 70 degrees. Again, that 70 degree angle plus that angle that I marked in green had to add up to equal 90 degrees. And so that's going to make this angle right here 20 degrees. And so that's a fact that you can use. The angle that the ramp makes with the horizontal is going to be the exact same angle that the weight makes with the perpendicular axis. If I look at this angle that the ramp makes with the horizontal, that's going to give me this angle that the weight makes with that perpendicular axis. I'm always going to be able to use that fact. So looking at this, I have the force of gravity, which is 49 newtons, and I'm going to break that into parallel and perpendicular components. So I can see from this that the parallel component of the weight is opposite the 20 degree angle. The sine of 20 degrees equals that parallel component of the weight divided by the hypotenuse. Again, the weight is the hypotenuse, that green vector for the force of gravity. That must be the hypotenuse. This is my right angle. My parallel and perpendicular components are the two components. Those are going to be smaller than the force of gravity, those two together equal the force of gravity. So I calculate this parallel component of the weight, and I get the parallel component of the weight is 49 times the sine of 20 degrees, which is 16.759 newtons. I can also calculate the perpendicular component of the weight. The cosine of 20 degrees equals the perpendicular component of the weight divided by 49 newtons. And so this gives me that the perpendicular component of the weight is 46.045 newtons. So now looking at this, if this box is in equilibrium, that means that the forces have to add up to equal zero. And so I have the tension in the rope that's pulling up the ramp parallel to the ramp. And I have the parallel component of the weight that is pulling down the ramp parallel to the ramp. And if this box is in equilibrium, those two have to cancel each other out. So if the component of the weight down the ramp is 16.759 newtons, that means that this tension in the rope needs to be 16.759 newtons. The forces perpendicular to the ramp must cancel out as well. And so the perpendicular component of the weight, that's the force that's down perpendicular to the ramp. That's 46.045 newtons. And so the thing that's pushing up perpendicular to the ramp is the normal force. Again, if those are balanced, that tells us that the normal force needs to be 46.045 newtons. And those were the two things I was looking for. If I have this box at rest on the ramp, the tension in the rope needs to be 16.759 newtons.
if I look at that, the ramp is go also going to be pushing up perpendicular to itself with a force that's 46.045 newtons. Again, because this is not a flat surface, the ramp does not need to push up to cancel out all of the weight. It only needs to cancel out the component of the weight that's perpendicular to the ramp. The rest of the weight, that parallel component, is canceled out by the rope. The next piece that I want to look at is what would happen if that rope was cut. If the rope is cut, we now are missing one of our forces. We don't have anything pulling up the ramp that cancels out that parallel component of the weight. And so shown in the picture are the two forces that are acting on the box now. We have the normal force and we have the force of gravity. And the force of gravity is still 49 newtons. It still has a component that's parallel to the ramp that's 16.759 newtons. It still has a component that's perpendicular to the ramp that's 46.045 newtons. Now if this box slides along the ramp, it's not moving up or down perpendicular to the ramp. And so that means that the forces perpendicular to the ramp still must cancel out. That means that the normal force is still equal to the perpendicular component of the weight. Again, any time an object slides along a surface, the forces perpendicular to the surface must balance each other out. And so we can see from this that the normal force is canceling out the perpendicular component of the weight but now there's not anything left that's canceling out that parallel component of the weight. We have this component of the weight that's acting down the ramp that's not being balanced out by anything. And so I'm going to apply Newton's second law to this. The net force that's acting on this box is that parallel component of the weight. Again, if I add the normal force together and the force of gravity, those are the two individual forces that are acting. The normal force cancels out the perpendicular component of the weight. I'm only left with that parallel component of the weight. So my net force acting on the box is 16.759 newtons. And then Newton's second law tells us that the net force acting on a box equals the mass of the box times its acceleration. So if I put those two things together, I have a net force of 16.759 newtons, and that equals 5 kilograms times the acceleration. So that gives me an acceleration down the ramp of 3.352 meters per second squared. And once you calculate this acceleration, it's going to have that constant acceleration along the ramp, and so now you can get a lot of one-dimensional kinematics questions. You could be asked, how long does it take to reach the bottom of the ramp, if I tell you how long the ramp is? How fast is it going after it slides two meters down the ramp? When you have these problems of objects on ramps, the biggest thing that people have trouble with is going through and calculating the parallel and perpendicular components. Again, being able to draw those components properly is the most important thing. Most people draw the perpendicular component correctly. They get that it needs to be perpendicular to the ramp. The thing that people often make mistakes on is the parallel component. Make sure that you draw the parallel component of the force of gravity, the parallel component of the weight. Make sure that you actually draw it parallel to the ramp. Again, that's what you're doing when you break vectors into components. You're finding how much of the vector is along each axis, and so you need to make sure that your components are along the individual axes that you've selected.